Welcome back to our final day of Adobe Max Week. We're so excited to be here with you today. If you're just joining in, please post in the chat where you're joining us from, where you are in the world, and what you're teaching. We'd love to get to know a little bit more about you and where you're based and continue to support you. Um, but thank you again for tuning in. Um, we have a really great panel to kick it off for your Friday. Um, we have Ignasi and Ashley who are joining us from the American School of Barcelona and my colleague John right here, um, who's also based in Barcelona. And we'll be sharing um, how to build uh, educator professional development programs, um, which American School of Barcelona has demonstrated so beautifully. And so again, if you're just joining in the chat, please share where you're joining us from, post in a comment, and we'd love to connect. Um, but without further ado, I will hand it off to my colleague, John Arboleda, um, who heads up education initiatives in EMEA. So John, Great. over to Thank you. Thank you, Clara. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's exciting session with the Adobe Max community panel. Um, and again, we'll be talking about building an educator professional development program. And I, I have the pleasure of having visited the school that we're gonna be talking about and meeting our, our guests that we have today. Um, just to give some context, what we're gonna be talking about today, we'll be talking about um, the American School of Barcelona successful kind of ed tech and digital literacy approach that they've done and how they enabled and empowered their teachers across the school to really develop these skills and how they've been able to innovate and bring technology and digital literacy into the classrooms. And also we'll hear a bit how they incorporated the Adobe Creative Cloud across the school. So we're very excited about that. And our, you know, on the screen, you're probably seeing uh, a little bit about American School of Barcelona. It's the American School of Barcelona to give you some context about who we're talking about. They have, you can see they're, they're a leading American international school that happens to be based here out of Barcelona. And they have a K through 12 school all the way through that they have. And you can see the breakdown and the profile of the school that we'll be talking about. So as, you're, as Ashley and Ignacio are talking, give you some context about the size and the scope of the school that we're talking about. Now, who are our guests today, and you won't, and I'm going to hand this over, is we have Ashley Holst, who is the Ed Tech Coordinator at the American School of Barcelona. We may say ASB for short now, now that you already know about the school. And Ignasi Jaramandro, who is the middle school Ed Tech teacher and advisor. And they're the ones who are going to be sharing the journey they've gone through and how they set up a wonderful professional development program across the school. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Are you guys ready up above me? Let's do this. Let's do this, let's get started. And in order to do this, I'm just gonna start with some opening questions to kind of lay some context regarding uh, the topic that we have today. And um, my first question for both of you is, um, what is ASB's approach towards digital literacy and ed tech? And what are some of the goals you, want to, you wanted to achieve regarding this strategy as it pertains to, your, to the teachers and to the students? Awesome, John, so I'm gonna kick us off here. Um, Ignacy and I have been talking a lot about this, um, especially during the time of kind of changing environments and the pandemic and how tech is just really so vital these days. So when we talk about digital literacy, I just wanna first of all lay the foundation that when we say digital literacy here at ASB, we think about digital literacy as the ability to read, understand and interact fluently with a variety of digital tools. So that can be computers, tablets, mobile phones, e-readers, et cetera. Um, we believe here at ASB that people who are digitally literate often do not experience this disequilibri disequilibrium as the digital world changes, as we've seen throughout the years here in education. And so they have these skills, variety of skills, to stay fluent. So that's really important for students because here at school, we want them to feel like this is a safe place to experience this disequilibrium and teachers and us integrators and coaches are kind of on the side to help support them of teaching them how to skill them for their future. Because when they leave, they're gonna be using different tools um, out there in the real world as well. So we really wanna prepare students for success beyond their school years. So here at school, it's a really safe pl place to try new things, take risks and kind of get out of sorts. And yeah, just really thinking about that need to introduce a variety of tools so they can skill up for students. As far as teachers, um, they're also in this place of constant learning. 
first of all, they chose education as a career, which is learning is the center of this. So at ASB, we really think about providing teachers with a space um, and the support to continue to learn. The best teachers are those teachers that are continuing to learn. As we know, tech is a place where we can really kind of work on that learning edge. Um, so yeah, we just wanna support them and give them space and time to take risks with technology and help everybody at our school be digitally literate. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, I wanted I want to jump on to something before I move into the next question. You point out some really key things. I think it's keen for our audiences. Digital literacy, you were you as ASB were defining what that meant for your school. And I think that was really important. And what I one thing I really wanted to call out is that you identified that the students as well as the teachers were your key stakeholders here? Because sometimes we think about digital literacy is only about the end user, the student in schools. And I think here, I, and, and again, I had the opportunity to visit the school earlier this year is that the teachers were just as an important stakeholder in this. And I, and I thought that was really important in how ASB was thinking about your digital literacy strategy to be able to do that. So I just, I just, I call out there to our listeners and our audience is that it's the teachers as well as the students. It really makes for a great approach because the students will move on but you want your teachers to keep developing their digital literacy capabilities and strategies. Um, I'm going to move on to, to the next question. And my next question will be, in terms with respect to, to Adobe, we know that you had a larger, there's a larger digital strategy that you're talking about. How did Adobe fit in as part of ASB's larger, larger digital ed tech strategy? That would be really interesting to know because some schools are thinking, hey, we, we don't use them yet. We are using it. We don't know how it fits. And it'd be great to understand how what what how you incorporate your reasons for incorporating Adobe and how that fit into your strategy. So, John, uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, usually when you are trying to do a big change in a school, uh, it's something that the leadership uh, kind of decides, and it's like a top-down uh, change. But in this case, it was the opposite. It was like the students or the students' need that uh, alert us and and. and because they wanted to do so many things in their projects, things that were very uh, limited in uh, with other tools, uh, they were the ones that, that um, told us like, okay, we need, how can we make these projects uh, the way we want to? And many of the tools that we were using at the time were very limited. So Adobe was that um, uh, the solution for this, right? So once we start using them, uh, teachers were, seeing the results uh, of these projects being improved. Uh, and so that was like the kind of the catch. That, oh, I want to do that too. So they started learning more about Adobe. And we helped them do that. And we're going to explain it in, in a few minutes. But this uh, will to, to improve uh, kind of like uh, wanted everyone to be on board of this project. And Adobe was the, the, the right tool to do so. Great. Right. You know, we and you know we're very grateful that Adobe could be could contribute to that, especially in the larger strategy to be able to do that. And I I like the thing that you brought out that it was not a top down approach that the leadership saying we're going to introduce Adobe and you guys got to accept that. It was really the need of the students wanting to express more of how they could do their work or maybe some of your educators on what to be able to do that. So it, it's really great to, to hear how that happened organically to be able to do that. Um, my next question for, for, for the two of you is related around, now you know the, now we're getting more to the core topic about the professional development, teacher training and support. So that's essential. We know that some of our audience may be saying, well, how do I start? We don't have a system, we're understaffed. W where's the starting point to be able to do that? It'd be great to understand a little bit about the teacher training, the supporting role that was essential in ASB's overall strategy. And, and why was that such an important to, to set something like this up versus just figure it out on your own. And if you can give us, shed some light about how you approach that. Um, so I can take that one, kind of talking around our professional development here at ASB. I think it starts with the school's culture around professional development. And Ignacy and I are on a team that's um, the teaching and learning team. And it's ran by our director of teaching and learning, which is Joanna Sina. And it's really been over time building this belief and building this core idea in every teacher, every administrator that comes into ASB around, we're here to foster a culture for teachers to also be forever learners. So there's a ton of PD that's constantly happening here at ASB. Um, it's super dynamic and we have things like across 
School Collaborative, which is the American schools in Spain. Um, so it's American International Schools in Spain. And we work with three different schools and we have a tech cohort within that. Of course, they're learning about literacy and they're learning about mathematics and science, but we have space for learning and exploring tech. We also have PD Tuesdays. So every Tuesday after school, teachers can host their own PD. Um, Ignacy and I have hosted several different PDs that teachers can choose to attend. Um, we also have Wednesdays after school that the division leaders also lead professional development and they pull in key people like Ignacy and myself to do some things around tech. So you can see there's all these different opportunities where teachers are constantly being encouraged and pushed to just continue their learning in areas that they're interested in. So this framework really gave us, Ignacy and I, a chance to really plug in all these different Adobe um, trainings in a way where people could kind of pick and choose where they wanted to attend. And when we present our slides and information here, we'll talk specifically around how did we get Adobe to start on fire here at ASB? So the framework is really kind of cultivating this understanding that teachers want to be and are forever learners. And then we took it from there. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I just wanna call out some things that I heard before I move on to the next question was, it was, it was a shared integrative approach across key stakeholders in the school. So that's good that the responsibility didn't just lie on one person to have to drive this, but you got the, the buy-in and the support from other stakeholders, which I, I heard that was really great. The other thing I heard is that ISB didn't stay insular. You actually were collaborating with other schools within this, this um, collaborative that you work with across Spain, which allowed for that. And I think one thing we've seen in this whole COVID world is schools become much not less insular. There's a more people, teachers and schools are much aware of what's happening than ever before. And how can you leverage and benefit from that? So depending what school you are, you can tap into your neighbors in the same country you're in or different region or across the globe, like, like the community panel is doing today. And I like the other thing that I heard was that you were respecting that the teachers could choose what worked best for them. A PD Tuesday, these, these other options, how they could develop their own professional development and using the software or the technology. And I know for our audience, we'll get into that just shortly as they, they'll walk through that. But I got one more question for them be, um, as we move forward. And I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Um, so it, as a result from, your, from ASB's professional development program and things that you've shared, what are some of the results you've seen um, implementing this? You know, what were the things that you were you saw? What were those unexpected surprises that you weren't expecting? Um, it'd be great to hear some, some of the impacts you've had. So, like, probably the uh, one of the most uh, the best results that we've seen is student work. Um, I've been working at ASB for seven years, and I've been teaching the same grades uh, throughout the beginning, and. If I go back and, and look at the lesson or the result of a project back then and I compare it to something that's, uh, that they're doing now, it's just like night and day. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy, but the kids are the same age and they, say they have the same ideas in their minds, but now they, are, they have the tools to make them happen. And it's, it's awesome to see this, this uh, different variety of results um, happening now. Um, also, again, like uh, whenever someone, another teacher sees uh, that result, it's like oh, they want to do that as well. So they're they're seeing, first of all, teachers engaged. They see student work that is uh, being awesome, and then they want to be able to contribute as well. So this would be one of the uh, easiest things to, to notice uh, after we implemented the Adobe program. Great. All right. Um, Thank you for thank you for sharing that. And and there's one thing I want to add, but I don't know if you're going to say this later or not. But I'm going to say it now because it just fits in with this, and it's something that I saw and I heard in the conversations. Apart from the the impacts that the students were impacted and the teachers were impacted, and I think something you're going to hear later in the next in the next part of our discussion is that the students became teachers to their. Up to, to the classroom teachers and how they were using some of the software and technology. And I found that really powerful, you know, to be able that what you shared that. Um, with that said, though, now I'll, the next part is, so we've been talking about ASB's, the reasons for starting their strategy. We talked about some of the approach that they did. We Now we've heard about some of the impacts they had. 
Well, the next session now where I'd want to hand over to Ignasi and Ashley is, can you walk us through a bit your, um, your professional development program and how it works? And so right now, Ignasi and Ashley are going to share us some slides so we can visually see how they've done this. Normally, we hear what, what they've done and the impact. Here, they're gonna, we're going to have some insights to how this works. So I'll have this hand this over to the two of you, and we'll be back at the end of, of this after you present this. Perfect. Thank you, John. Um, so we have a slide. Um, we're going to get into our professional development. And we thought, Ignacio and I thought it'd be super important to kind of talk a little bit about the background of how did we get to be able to be where we could actually do professional development the way that we did. Um, so if we're thinking about technology and how it can be brought into schools, we were starting with the standalone IT courses. Of course, students were pulled out and they had their IT class and that was their experience to technology. So we quickly, and this is even before my time, the school made a decision. And that's really important is that the, the, the school administration made a decision that we're gonna invest in technology. So you here you can see we started investing devices. So we were getting two to one devices in our primary program and then one to one in secondary program. So that was great, but um, Ignasi, do you wanna take that, some of the limitations of that? Yes, uh, well, we started uh, having this uh, figure of the tech integrator. Um, it was a person that was teaching technology in the school, but also helping other classes uh, to bring technology in their subjects. Um, that was a great way to, to bring technology in, in more classrooms and uh, make it more accessible to other kids. But the problem was that the, the expertise was still uh, in the tech person. And um, we needed to make the other core teachers more independent in the sense. And that's why uh, after a few years, we came up with this um, idea of the technology coaches. Um, so the teachers would just teach uh, technology, but this coach would be the one that goes and, and helps um, the other teachers. But they, in this case, bring the expertise and they transfer it to the uh, core teacher. In this way, the teacher is more independent, but they're still uh, using new skills in the classroom. And that's what led to the Adobe Creative Suite that we implemented. And then uh, we, we could say, why Adobe? Uh, there's different resources, but why, why Adobe? Uh, we talked a bit about it before, but um, we find that being in the classroom, uh, I don't see any limits to any of the Adobe products. Um, before, we would find some limits in creativity. For instance, I remember at the beginning of uh, my teaching career, um, we would give uh, projects that were very, very uh, closed. And so when we said, OK, let's uh, make a bike, then every single student would make another bike. Uh, so basically, it was uh, co not copying, but get getting the same product or the same result in the end. Uh, obviously, kids wanted to do something else more than making bikes. So that was a, a limitation. But also, there were some limitations in platform. Uh, in our school, there's uh, Mac users and Windows users. And sometimes uh, I found uh, very hard uh, to find a tool that was good for both. Uh, maybe Windows had a good tool, but then Mac didn't, and vice versa. So yes, now we find better tools that students, instead of uh, building a bike, they can build another way of transportation, a rocket ship or a plane. So there's some progress there, but there's still some limitation. What if I have a Mac and I want to build a car, but my program doesn't let me build a car, right? So that's, uh, again, uh, you have done some, some work, but still are not there yet. And other things that um, we felt uh, they were lacking before is the depth of, of, the, of the project. Sometimes uh, that was super often in my classrooms. Kids coming uh, up to me and saying like, hey, I want to be able to, uh, do something with this program. Can I do that? It's like, well, you can do that, but not with this program. So yes, you can build a plane, but this plane won't have wings. Or yes, we can. you can build this car, but this car doesn't have wheels. So yes, they could get closer to the result, but it was still not complete. 
and and that's why we find when we when we found the, that Adobe could be a solution for the school, um, all these limits were gone. Perfect. Thanks, Ignacy. So we're going to talk to you about like how did we then launch this huge endeavor of professional development. So the first thing we actually did, and this came up when Ignacy was talking before, the students were the ones pushing this. The students were the ones finding limitations in the programs that were um, being used, the web-based programs. And we first started with a weekend workshop um, where Harbor University actually came out, uh, local university in Barcelona, and did a weekend workshop on Illustrator. And the kids just were on fire with the work they did. They printed it off, it was in the hallways. And then teachers started asking about like, hey, I didn't know so-and-so could make that. I didn't know so-and-so could do that. So again, it started with the students. They caught a fire and their teachers, of course, want to provide opportunities that engage students. So then we moved into launching this for teachers as well. And so then we started saying, all right, teachers are into this, students are into this, let's do some professional development around this. And so now we're gonna talk to you about the approach that we took for this professional development. Again, all of this came and was possible because of the work that was done beforehand. So we actually launched what we called like the Adobe Creative Suite workshop series. And we offered it in three different ways. The first way um, was teacher led classes. And that was usually led by somebody like myself, Ignacy, we have Andrew Carl here at ASB as well, who's very into Adobe, and just people who are interested in the products that already know how to use them. And we ran hybrid courses. So this works, if you can keep going Ignacy, um, with one expert in the room. So we have the teacher, they did a hybrid on Google Classroom and we came together in the mornings and we taught a little cohort of teachers who were interested in it. It just so happened that our great art teachers, Samantha McGinnis and also Anna Martinez were kind of like in there, but we also had second grade teachers. We had high school teachers. We had just like a very wide range of teachers who were interested in learning because they had heard from their kids or they heard from their peers outside of school that these tools were really cool. So that was one option that teachers could participate in. The other option came with um, online PD opportunities. So this was actually learning with Adobe experts from Adobe's free professional development courses. So if you click one more time there, Ignacy, so this is like Adobe EDU courses and they provide just a plethora of different courses. And so I went through and month by month looked at what was being offered and then announced it to the staff. Hey, if you're interested in animated infographics, this could be really cool for econ or history or kids who are presenting whatever, um, come and sign up for this and we can learn it together. And so that was the second way. So we had these teacher led classes that met in the morning and also online. Another way, just the online PD opportunities and kind of letting people know about them. And then the third way here was via study groups. And so this was individuals who maybe didn't want to do the morning classes or have it be that structured, um, but wanted to get together with a colleague that they really work well together and just choose to learn by tutorials online how to use these different programs. So in this case, if you can click once more, Ignacy, we had small groups of teachers getting together to learn different platforms on their own. And of course, Ignacy and I guided them towards like, here are some different tutorials if you're interested in Illustrator. Here are some tutorials if you're interested in Photoshop. So this was the approach that we kind of pushed out every month and said, hey, this month we're focusing on Adobe Spark. We're gonna tell you these three ways you can learn. This month we're focusing on Illustrator. Here's three ways you can learn. So by having a lot of different availability and also just letting people know it's out there and it's happening, we saw that it was catching fire. Unfortunately, um, in March of the year that we launched this, we went into lockdown and we stopped um, running these groups as teachers were kind of flipping their learning onto how can we be the best virtual teachers that we can be. So that was our PD process. And that's what we launched there. John, if you have any questions about that, otherwise we can go into student work. No, the one thing I just want to add, and I think to be fair to the audience is when I met ASB, this was already, they were they were doing this already. We discovered that they were doing that. And I think when we discovered this, that's why we wanted to tell the story regarding their PD approach, how they're doing this. And the other thing I'll, I'll highlight is we're actually gonna be doing a case study on ASB. And when that's done, we'll be able to share that with everyone because we hope this is inspiring and motivating regarding 
what they've done organically and how they used a variety of different resources to make this happen. But please, let's let's see some of the work that let's see what some of the work produced from all this. So please continue. Yeah, and I think this is one of the most important things uh, to see because this is actually what students have created, right? Thanks to Adobe and and teachers that were so. Um, motivated by, by, by it. Like this is an animation of the solar system. Like sometimes I, I looked at animations online and I see that for instance, uh, like the inner planets are spinning at the same speed as the outer planets and that's completely wrong. The inner planets uh, orbit much faster, but uh, using Adobe Animate, they could use frames to visually see this happen. So for instance, they, they took every, uh, every frame was 10 days of orbit and that animation was made uh, like this. So they visually could see how the time was going uh, by, right? Uh, this was using uh, Adobe Animate, but we've also used Adobe Photoshop um, to create uh, game covers or book covers. Um, we give students the opportunity to explore and imagine what their uh, product should be or should look like. The second one, for instance, is like a real book that um, the, the, the girl preferred this version of the cover, so she came up with it. Um, that was also very interesting. Uh, and this project, we actually had this uh, um, uh, initiative called One School, One Book, uh, and then we were reading uh, the Malala book. And so we combined a few students in um, secondary and primary. So what the secondary students would do, they would go to primary students, take a picture of their faces, and then we use in Photoshop, they would Photoshop them in the um, original cover of the book, like so. And so then they would print these uh, printings and then um, the second graders would draw what they think, they what they thought uh, or what their idea of the Malala uh, book was about. So they would substitute the Malala's magic pencil for uh, their thoughts. That was very powerful too. And it's also always very nice to see different grades interact together. And then this example is uh, an amazing example of a project-based learning um, unit that we did with the art team who were drawing these beautiful tessellations after learning about them in math. And then our tech team, Ignasi, Andrew, and myself came in and worked with the students with Adobe Illustrator until then they were ready with these amazing um, laser cut wood puzzle pieces. So here you can see this is the final product. So it's like math to art to tech, back to physical objects. And then these were puzzles that they then, this middle school group gave and went down to the primary and gave them to them and taught them about tessellations and putting these puzzles together. So Adobe really helped us take this to the next level as well. Um, and then we have this other great project that was done by our high school artists. So this was their first time using Illustrator and they were studying um, the theory behind color and your, your an like the animal that you most wanna associate with. Um, and they created these logos that they were used to sketching in their notebooks. And then we transferred those into Adobe Illustrator and they created their own logos and then they published these around the school. So this is some really great art and how the art teacher, um, Anna Martinez was just kind of, oh, this is great digital art, let's bring this yeah. in as well. And then, yeah, no, that's fine. And this is uh, another one of my favorite projects. This was done with Jennifer Killian and her grade nine students. They write um, this, I believe, essays every year. And they publish them by usually printing them off on a white paper with three images and it goes in the hallway. We completely revamped this and we told them, hey, do you wanna use professional software to make a class magazine? And the students like, oh yes, amazing. And we wanna include even better photos. So of course, Ignasi, myself, and the core teacher got together and we planned this unit. That comes into the coaching role of like, let's sit down and plan this together. Um, and then Ignasi came in for one class to teach about how to take great photographs. I came in for another class and said, here's how you use InDesign. Um, it's similar to what you're used to using on Canva, only like Ignasi mentioned, there's no limits. We can really do this a great way. And then we had students create and put together all the layouts. They print them off in magazines and they handed them out to their parents. And that took that motivation for writing for a authentic audience up completely. Um, so this is one of our my favorite projects as well here at ASB. 
And then, well, with Adobe Premiere Pro, you can do so many projects. I'm not going to play this, uh, but it's basically a, a, a project that uh, in, in history in which students would uh, dress up as um, people from the industri Industrial Revolution. And so with the green screen that I have behind me, uh, they would uh, pretend that they were in that age. And so they would make everything black and white and, and, and learn more from the characters from that time uh, by impersonating them. And that was very powerful. Um, there's so many projects that you can do with this. Uh, well, I'm not going to show this one. It's like a, I was like kind of cloning uh, this one, uh, cloning myself to play instruments. Like I was a man, a band. And so the students would uh, make a similar project like this. But the cool thing about I just Premier say one thing about that, Ignacy? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Back to Ignacy's, I know he's not going to show it, but this was something that happened during virtual schools where he, along with our amazing PE teacher who got into video editing and Photoshopping, would put out these challenges to the middle school team showing these videos, and it really brought a sense of community together. So not only does it help our students' skills, but it really kept us together as a community because everybody's missing Ignacy during um, lockdown. We weren't <laughs> able to see each other and our PE teacher, Luis, and they were just continuing to put out all these amazing videos. So that's nice. all thank I want to say about that you. project because it was just so amazing. I'm just going to finish one, with one project that is like combining uh, multiple tools, which is the best experience, uh, which is in this case, Photoshop and Premiere Pro. In this case, we did like a little uh, breakdown of a, an art piece and the students would uh, just break it down in, in different um, layers, like so. Uh, and, and then they would make a video that was, was using Photoshop. And then they would make a video doing like an art review. In this case, the art review was not like static, showing just a still picture uh, on the screen for a few seconds, but it was something that was that had some movement. And I'm going to show you this uh, as an example. It's very short. It's like 20 seconds. And so you can have an idea of what it was. This painting is called The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. It was made in 1931. Something that I found very interesting was that Salvador Dali was only 28 years old when he made this painting. That's a very impressive feat. I really like this painting because it's one of those paintings where you can interpret it in many ways, and it's just very mesmerizing to look at. That was a short example of it, and it just gives so much value to the, to, to the project. Um, and that was done by a seventh grader. So um, that was uh, an interesting project, that's for sure. And I think that was the last one. Okay. And I'm going to jump in here. I know we're, we're at time and we got just, I'm going to ask one final closing comments. And I, for those of you going over a little bit more, thank you for joining us and from joining us from across the globe. Two things I just want to mention this last part before I got my, and before I'm going to hand this over is I th thank you for the journey. It was a journey you took us on. And I want to call this out to the audience that from an idea of, starting something like starting a, a, a program of introducing digital literacy in ed tech, the, 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 P, the professional development setup program they had, the software, the different software they were include, they were involving, we're glad to see examples of how they used Adobe to make that part of the teaching and learning experience. So thank you, Ashley Ignasi, for walking us through that journey. And the other thing we talked about with ASB is eventually doing badging with them and using the Adobe Creative Educator programs where the teachers can now officially start getting badges for them learning um, to use our software, I think is great. My last comment is this, and then I'm gonna, I'm done, is when you reflect back on this, this whole process you've talked us through and you've, you've shared with us, what are you most proud of as an educator? What are you most proud of when you're thinking about what you've done? You've enabled and equipped teachers and students, your impact is there. And I know there's a lot of other people involved, so I know you're speaking on behalf of a lot of peers and colleagues, but what, what are you most uh, proud about? And then, and then after you're done saying that, I'm going to hand this back over to, to Clara to wrap this up. So Ashley Ignasi, thank you very much for being a part of this and to, to everyone for joining us. And we'll end it with your final statements and then Clara, Clara coming in. Well, in, in my case, I, uh, um, it, was, it was very, it was great to see students uh, like not see, don't see their frustration in their faces when you, you, you told them, no, you cannot do this. Oh, you have this idea, but it's it's not possible with our tools, and 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 now giving them the wings to to do what's in their minds 
it's just a great feeling. Yeah, and I can piggyback on that exactly. Um, being able to push our students to the next level of really hitting their learning curve, their learning edge has been amazing. Um, Adobe tools do that for us. Everybody has the same software and they can actually push themselves. And then one of the best things for me has been that we've had a few students attend Adobe Max. And so I think it's just like opening up a whole new world for them and they're excited about it. And so we know when students are excited and have the opportunity, they can do great things. So as them being the future, I just feel excited that they're they're part of this design world. They can design the world that we're gonna be living in. Perfect. Well, thank you all so much for an amazing panel. And I can say from visiting the American School of Barcelona myself, it is incredible to see what you have achieved there across the grade levels and bringing um, Adobe tools and other ed tech tools to educators who they're new to. Um, so it's incredible to see this, the scaffolded PD that you've accomplished. Um, but Ignacy and Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you are um, full time in school. And so I know that there's a lot going on. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you. And thank you to John thank for guys. moderating. This has been an amazing panel. And um, we have one last session for you today. Um, Tacey Trowbridge, who heads up our education programs in about 20 minutes, will be sharing our thought leadership research on the skills that industry is looking for um, within college graduates. So stay tuned for that. And thank you again to our um, panelists and moderator. We'll see you in about 20 minutes. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank Thanks. you.